And I don't think it's entirely necessary to have that hyper realism to be a tremendous comic book artist. I mean, look at Mignola. It's a very simplified form of storytelling. If you compare that to, say, whoever is drawing the Avengers currently, you know, whose every nut and bolt is drawn, which is more enjoyable. Sometimes, you know, when you're reading a comic book, in, in the best cases, it takes you back to everything else in your world is erased. And, and now you're just looking at this and you're in this world. And that's, it's a whole, it's a very magical experience. It's a magical day. Yeah, just like my Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> shirt. <laughs> this is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Yo. Hello. Welcome. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Ink Pulp Podcast with me and the dumb shark and Hello, our brother. special actually not even a what's up brother i was gonna say our special guest but not so special one of the worst guests ink pulp <laughs> has ever had on the show before i've canceled more episodes for this guest than any other guest <laughs> after we've recorded mind yeah. you uh dan are we, are uh, we gonna cancel this one as well Good. Yeah, this is not this so, is not going out. Like I already, uh, okay, I already okay, know okay. this. So I'll start yeah. using the N word and all the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we have Dan. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to say his last name because I have no idea how to really say it. P Panasian, Panasian, right? You know penicillin, exactly. penicillin, like the penicillin. Cure right? <laughs> all for everything. <laughs> um, no, I like I like the long pauses in between all the syllables. That's probably how I should pronounce it moving forward. <laughs> Why <laughs> is it that Dan in Los Angeles has a worse connection than Matteo all the way out in Italy? Look, why is that, Dan? I'll tell you why. Have you seen Matteo's yeah. studio? That's like a legendary yes. studio. I've Every... I've been there. I've been there. Oh, you haven't been God. there. Don't no, ask but me. I've seen the photos, and I got <laughs> and, and I. I get, as soon as those photos came out, I kept sending them links to all my other artist friends just to make them feel awful, you know? <laughs> well, speaking of that, to be honest with you, I have a fun story about it because oh, yeah. uh, until a certain point in my life, I didn't, I wasn't caring so much about where I was working. So wherever was fine with me. It huh. started in my bedroom and then I was able to buy my first apartment it became, you know, the extra room, the secondary bedroom. Yeah. But I wasn't – it was really practical, but I I never took care of, uh, you know, creating an environment that was inviting for an artist. Mm -hmm. And then one year I had the pleasure of uh, visiting uh, you then uh, back when you had your house in uh, downtown L.A. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The old bank. It was a former yeah. bank or something. Was, I remember uh, you, you had vaults the in the first floor. Yeah, it was an old Federal Reserve building. And they oh, turned it all yeah. into lofts. It was great, great building. Yeah, so, yeah, it was this beautiful apartment, like huge living room. And I remember seeing, like, your studio. It was the first time when I saw a really, really – like good looking studio. Like when I, when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, it must be so cool to you know wake up every morning and, and work in in this kind of environment." It was that so. Apartment was great. Yeah. 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 Tell me. Well, I was going to say I had the Dave Johnson had a huge convention banner from a hundred bullets, and it was monster mm -hmm. size, and he couldn't do anything with it. I mean, even, he had a loft apartment, but it didn't have the ceilings. That this one had yeah i put that up there and god, you know god bless elena my wife she's like oh that, that looks great because you know it's dave johnson it, it looks like it could be comics it could be a movie poster it, it you yeah. know it, it wasn't necessarily like spider-man you know leaping it was it was badass it just that also kind of transformed the studio into something a little bit more like you'd see on a lot somewhere so yeah 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 so that was the first time when i was like huh Maybe having a cool studio, it's it could transfer good energies into my work. So that's when I started telling myself, mm. okay, next time for my next, you know, next time I'm gonna move 
or, or even with this studio, I'm going to try and make it better and more inviting for myself, just for my, mm-hmm. my own sake. And, uh, and that's what I did. Uh, after that house, I went, uh, I moved in with my girlfriend to do a new apartment and I made sure that the studio was, you know, well placed and it was a cool. nice, in a nice spot with nice furnitures and all. And, and, and then I realized, oh yeah, like every morning I'm excited to be working in this space. So I'm going to yeah. keep that same philosophy and mentality from now on. So basically, you know, it started from you. Like the fact that I have this beautiful studio now, it started from you. It's all tech to you. That library that you have <laughs> is like something out of like a, a James Bond villain's library or something. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, man. I, I, I'm i so proud of it. Like uh-huh. and, and uh, originally I had a plan of having it, you know, going through other uh, uh, walls oh, and wow. having like a moving stairs. That uh-huh. you could, you know, roll around. So oh, wherever so you cool. have to go, you could, you know, move like you know <laughs> the old libraries. Yeah. yeah but yeah, then yeah. I ended up doing something different, so I could use this uh, this upper area as well. So at the stairs that leads here, that can lead you to the rest of the library. Hey, did you know that November fifteenth marks the second anniversary of my Mister Freeze book? Well. Now you know, and what better way to celebrate than sharing a nice discount code with you. That's right, just visit EssentialSequential.com, scroll through my One Bad Day related items, pick the ones you like, and use code OneBadFriday24 at checkout to receive your 20% discount. Be quick though, the special offer will expire November 24th. You're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's no, that's very inspiring. It does kind of help. It, like you're you're going to work, but you're also surrounded by things that inspire you or uh, push you a little yeah. bit. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Do, when you guys get super busy, does your studio tend to fall into disarray? Um, a little bit. Much. Yeah. No, just me. I mean, <laughs> the only part the only part I do um, like manually is the the black and white art. So everything else is on the computer and, you know, I might have some extra Xerox pages or, you know, layouts and then they, you know, I don't have time to organize it, but I try to keep everything organized. Like even if the, the kitchen is in disarray, it it's unsettling, you know, you want it, you want to feel like yeah. your, your deadlines may be chaotic and, and crazy, but everything around you is peaceful and tranquil. It, it kind of helps the mindset a little bit. That's good. Yeah, That's good yeah, I totally agree. Like I'm realizing that now. That's why my house is, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty normally it's pretty neat almost everywhere, mm-hmm. and and I make sure like I learn how to not even ask myself, uh, do I want to do this or not? Like whenever I see something that's not at its place, I don't yeah. even ask myself anymore. I just grab it and put it back to its place. But to go back to your question, Sean, personally. Uh, my studio can get a little hectic when I'm yeah. super busy and I have too much yeah. stuff on my plate. But uh, I, uh, knowing that I have that tendency, I made sure that I had a lot of, um, how do you call it? A lot of table space. It's, they're not right, tables, but right. you know, I had a lot of space to lay down stuff on right, so that right. stuff, yeah. yeah, so that things don't pile up. Yeah. And that, that was one of the main features of my studio. That there's a lot of stuff to put stuff on, if if it makes sense. Mateo, so, are, are you writing yeah. also now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, my book, yeah, I'm I'm writing it. Uh, That's awesome. Badly, but I'm writing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. How about you then? Like you, lately, over the last few, what would you, would you say, like – uh, seven, eight years, you've been writing a lot more. Like we, you, I don't know. I, I see your career and you, you started mainly as an inker. Am I, am I right? Correct right. in this? Yeah. And I, then you became like a full, you know, artist, like hundred percent artist. And now you're both artists, but also writing a lot. Am I right? Yeah, I'm writing. I'm actually more, I'm doing more writing than I am drawing which is unusual, mm-hmm. 
But um, yeah, when I started, I tried to break in. And I thought as an anchor, it would it would help me get into more penciling. But I didn't have the t- I wasn't talented enough to even handle it, even if they did. And Marvel would throw me like a pin up here and there, and every now and then, for some crazy reason, give me a cover, which is you know, in retrospect, looking back at those covers, I'm like, oh my god, I would never give this guy a cover. <laughs> but you know, it, it helped me to to pursue that a little bit. And, um, and then I got, um, a book from Rob Liefeld and all, all of a sudden I'm, I'm penciling and inking my own comic book profit. And that was just, you know, every issue I was learning something because I had never really done that before. Um, uh, but then how old, I got were, how old were you when you did profit, Dan? Um, 24 or 25. Okay. Yeah. And I was trying, so, I was trying desperate, desperately to draw like Jim Lee but it came out yeah. like, you know, it, was, it looked more like Rob Liefeld and, you know, it's, it's not, not even as accomplished as Rob. It was still fraught with a lot of inconsistency and like, you know, this panel would look good or maybe this hand would look okay, but everything else was a disaster. You know, it was, it, it was, it was interesting. Like you look at J. Scott Campbell's um, uh, Gen 13 run. And if you look at the very yeah. first issue and then you look at his final issue, I mean, it's, it's night and day. And I wasn't yeah. having that same massive trajectory as far as le- the learning curve that he experienced. But uh, by the time I got to, like, it was called Profit Zero, I was like, oh, okay. Now I'm, I'm you know, it was getting a little bit better. But it was still very much in that kind of poppy image style that was popular in the 90s. Like, you know, I don't know if that stuff even re- remotely holds up now because there's just so many talented artists out there pulling from all sorts of different artistic inspiration and you know everybody's like leveling up like crazy so i i have two questions about it the first one like when you were inking and but you your plan as you said was to become a a full like penciler anchor like a full a complete artist were you studying on the side or is it just mental, like looking at a lot of stuff that you had to ink for the pencilers and trying to yeah. suck in as much well, as much as possible? Or what 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 was the process there well, in order I mean, for was, you to become penciler? Like I said, occasionally they'd let me do like a backup story of like five pages or or something, but it was it was very there were long gaps in between those experiences. But I had this idea that since I'm inking over, I was, I, I was lucky enough to be inking over like really talented guys. I kept thinking I'm going to magically absorb uh, yeah. some of their skill and talent because I'm, I'm working over their things. It's going to improve me. And of course that, that is, that doesn't, it doesn't work that way, but I really thought that I would assimilate some of those um, artistic virtues. Like not at I, all you think, yeah. or, or in a slight like percentage or not at all. What you maybe, think? maybe maybe because I'm actually seeing in front of me and holding in my hands like a Jim Lee page and going, oh, OK, you can you know, when you look at the original art for the first time and you had just been yeah. working on your own and then you see someone else's work, it kind of opens up your mind and you think, oh, this can be done. So someone did this, a human, another human being did it and they're not much older than you. Um, you can do it, too. So in that way, it, it kind of allowed me to expand my mind or or what I, what was what I could potentially be capable of, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And, 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 and the second question was when, because to me, you're, I, I, I don't want to just blow smoke up your ass. I'm, I'm genuinely a huge fan. Like I think <laughs> you are like, you're an amazing artist. Like I love your stuff or you're, you're incredible. I and agree with So since you were saying that, uh, in the early days, your art was not that great. What happened? Like, can you point out a, a specific moment when things change? Was yeah. It was a gradual because it now was... you have your own thing and it's not even close to a Liefeld or a Jim Lee. It's, yeah, it's yeah. clearly uh, Dan Pen- uh, Penicillin. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. So what, what, what happened? I, I, I'm, well, I'm super curious about it. Um, I, I got out of comic books not too long after profit. Cause I, I noticed the business was changing. I was, um, 
my father had passed away. I didn't think it affected me at all, but my dad was a big inspiration for wanting to do comics. He was a commercial artist and he always wanted to be a comic book artist. So it was my way of trying to impress him, I think. And even though we didn't get along so well, um, as we got older, we had our, like, I still dream about him and we're having arguments. Like it's not a, great relationship um, <laughs> but, <laughs> it never ends yeah it never ends like, they're he's never ending funny. fight yeah, he's haunting me but um, <laughs> um but yeah so he, he coincidentally like after he passed away is right around the time where i got out of comics and i thought well you know what i'll pursue there's so many opportunities in california with the movie studios video game studios um, there was skateboard and surfing companies and apparel companies. So I started doing all commercial art. I was doing storyboards. And, um, but the problem was before I had the crutch of inking some amazing artists, you know, from like Jeff Johnson to, you know, Will Spartaccio to Jim Lee, I was inking yeah. Mark Silvestri here and there. I mean, all these, you know, uh, guys who could just draw so well, I went, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen his setup at San Diego Comic-Con. His name's um, Jeff um, Jeff Watts. Sorry. Um, no, is, is it Jeff Watts? Maybe maybe it is. But he's he has a, his own studio in San Diego, and he, he teaches people life drawing and some painting, if you, if you want. So I thought I was living in Laguna. I was going to drive down and, and check this out. I was going to go to a life drawing session. And I went in there as a professional artist. And, you know, these people, most of these people who do like drawing are using a lot of tone. And I, I, I only understood how to draw like a coloring book, basically. Like I didn't even understand that lines or feathering are the equivalent of uh, a tone uh, being put down. Like you're trying to show a gradation of shadow with a, with feathering. And I, I didn't quite understand that. I was, I was used to tracing you know, other artists and um, just trying to get the line correct, not necessarily understanding what the line meant. So here I am in this, this, you know, setting, it's not a classroom or anything and everybody's doing this drawing and I'm making a living at it. I have a nice house and I can't, I realize I can't draw. I'm like, it's, it looks like a, you know, like an eighth grader, you know, a 14 year old with some potential one day. But it's not anything like a, an adult. Professional how, how old artist. were you when when you started going to these classes, Dan? Probably twenty seven, twenty eight, right around then. Okay. And um, I, I remember driving back, just feeling humiliated, and um, I was like, I, you know, I just, I may have never done it again. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go again. I'm going to understand this because basically, like, I was trying to draw someone's face that is not that doesn't look like a face that John Byrne had drawn. And like, there's a way to construct a nose in a very simple way. Um, you know, it's, it's three lines here and then this represents a nostril, this represents a bridge in the nose, but I didn't really know what that meant in a sense of when you're drawing, you want to create volume. And then particularly if someone's nose shape is different than what, you know, what you're, what you've learned to do through comics, like all of a sudden you really have to look at what you're, um, at the subject, whether it's an apple or whether it's a person, you know, and not everybody has these superhero muscular builds where every single muscle is flexed like a Gil Kane cover. So yeah. it was a big, big transition, but I got into it and it really changed how, how I drew um, dramatically. Cause now I, I actually learned how to draw a little bit, you know, there's, I, there's still a long way to go and I, I, I'd love to do even more like drawing, but, and I, I, I try to do it as often as I can, but there was that period of time where I started understanding tone and value a lot more and understanding how to draw what I saw. If that makes sense. Um, and that helped. And then I got, I started doing storyboards and they're 30, like sometimes they're doing 30 panels a day and storyboards to any of your like viewers who don't know they they look a lot like comic book panels, except in most cases, yeah. They're very rough. They're very simple. They're not like finished illustrations. I thought, Were, hey, was your storyboarding? Ex I'm hmm? sorry. Was your storyboarding experience mainly advertising storyboards, or yeah. was it cinema movies? I did some. I did some um, like movie storyboards, but not much. Mostly TV commercials. And um, but I thought to myself, if I could draw 30 of these a day, I could draw six really finished panels a day. And I'm like, maybe I have the confidence to get back into comic books and 
again, the kind of a misguided thought because it, it's really a different comics are really a different animal. And that sounded good in theory, but it was enough to get me excited to move back into comics. So that, that helped. Gotcha. And I still had a big learning so, curve. I still wanted to, I, I still thought, well, I have to draw a certain way. You know, Marvel expects me to draw this way. I, and this is what people might remember me from. And meanwhile, I've been over 10 years. So I'm sure nobody, you know, you know, fans change. There's some hardcore fans that sure. remain, but then I started almost drawing like I used to draw because I thought that's what was required. And then mm -hmm. a light bulb went off. I think it was probably Dave Johnson who um, was like, Hey, this, the stuff you're doing at drink and draw where you're more free <clears throat> and just drawing whatever has more appeal than your standardized comic book artwork. And your, my inking was a lot looser too. It was a little bit more like, um, you know, I guess my influences in that in that way are like Klaus Jansen and Jorge Safino and maybe a little bit of Topi. Yeah. But and I, and is I this, at is this what Eric is this the technical term that Eric uses called flim flam? Is, is that what <laughs> we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I started. I'll, I'll get into that later. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, for for me, you know that that light bulb went off, and I'm going. You know what? It, it is more fun, and I'm going to take a chance on just expressing myself. How, how I I like to and it worked out okay. Yeah, yeah more than okay, man. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah. stuff. Uh, Dan, do you remember the first project you did where you you kind of embraced your your not comic book style, your more natural style? It was probably a short story for that Scotty Young wrote. It was for X Men Manifest Destiny. It was only an eight page story, but Marvel let me ink myself, and before I was being inked. Uh, by other people. And my pencils to this day are just very loose. They're not, you know, I expected them an anchor to go in and turn them the way I saw them in my head, but you really can't, you know, you never know who you're going to get from an inking perspective. So this is the first time somebody let me ink myself. And it was, it was very cartooned because I, I love, I love cartooning more than um, drawing realistic. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's, more expressive. I think you can, the expressions themselves, you can convey a lot more emotion. And anyhow, I, I could go on and on between the difference, like the, like the difference between cartooning and, you know, with something like Alex Ross does, like there's, there's pluses and minuses. Even to though I don't really consider you like a, a, a cartoony artist. I see you probably because I'm, I, I'm, I'm cartoony. Like I see you, that you have a, a strong, like realistic base. I, I kind of fell into that, Mateo, but like, if you look at slots, I don't know if you remember that book yeah. I wrote for. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. That, that's more I, I, it was the first more. time I saw something uh, written by you. It was a beautiful, I remember issue number one. It was oh. incredible. Mateo, do you remember the rest reading... was kind of shitty, but issue number one. It, it was Dan, great. <laughs> Dan, here's, here's a little, little fun story. We were at New York comic con. And uh, uh -oh. slots one had just come out and Mateo and I hung out in the city for a few days beyond the show. And there was one night where we went out to dinner, we were sharing a bed and we were both in bed reading slots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and Mateo. <laughs> it was a nice combination between gay and nerd. Yeah. It was, really, <laughs> yeah. It was that soft spot. Yeah. I wish I was there. That, I wish I was in the middle. That's, yeah, of course. Yeah, that would have been great. The middle spoon. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I would like to go back to drawing a little bit more, like more Drucker, and, and that it doesn't look like more Drucker, but there's some like cartooned aspects, and I just think that that I, that's that's why I love your stuff, Mateo. I remember, you know, I, I use you as an example with a lot of people because when I first met you, it was it was it was almost a Disney style in a way. Oh, not almost. Like, can you can yeah. take almost away. It was pure Disney <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then I remember it was kind of a perfect uh, thing for you to eventually do Deadpool. And then then after Deadpool, it was a hard, you were like, okay, where do I fit? Where do I? And this is from my perspective, Mateo. I'm sure it's yeah. not on track. But then, then you started adopting a more rougher finish, like a, um, you know, a, a incorporating some of this like dry brush and different, different aspects. Yeah. And you just, it was like, 
it was natural for you. It just, it, the transition didn't seem to, but it changed how everybody saw your artwork. Like it, 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 it was enough of the cartoony fun stuff and you still had the, the bounce and the energy to it, but it also had this refined artistic approach to it. And I think that was like a perfect amalgamation of styles. And then what, what's amazing with your work is that you're like, Oh, now I'm going to do, um, you know, some, you know, I use all these gray tones. I'll use ink washes or now the latest one I've seen you post is like, I'm going to, um, use line work to show, um, shadow and, depth and it's, it's just amazing to watch so oh, it's like frank miller in a way like frank miller's always changing his style but it's still frank miller but it's exciting to watch and some sometimes you see a guy change his art style and you're like oh my god that's why would he do that i like the way he used to draw but yeah. i i i remember you just made me um you just reminded me of uh, kyle baker oh yeah yeah oh my Great. god he was one of those. He was. I, I, I don't know why I use the past. I I believe is still alive and working probably. Yes. I yeah, don't know. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I I was talking in, in the past tense because I I I was reminding myself of the of the feeling that I had the first times that I saw his stuff, and I remember this huge, incredible difference between styles and stuff. And I remember. When they published, uh, like DC published the the big like Wednesday comic. Mm -hmm. what, what was that thing? I don't remember the the name. Yeah, it was Wednesday, Wednesday, comics. Wednesday comics. Yeah, yeah Wednesday comics. Yeah. And I remember all of a sudden seeing his stuff, and I think it was using back then the three D, the first three D yes, models. Yes. And yeah, I was yeah, like, weird. why is he doing this? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so when when you said there's some people that change style abruptly without giving a fuck and i i mean there's a part of me that loves it but sometimes i'm like why like the stuff that you did prior to that was beautiful why would you yeah. change it but yeah i, I feel that way about have john you, have you ever met him is there anyone here yeah, that i've met kyle yeah I've met oh, okay kyle. i just you know I, I haven't had much of a conversation i was more of like a you know hi kyle baker that type of thing but yeah um I've never talked to him about artwork or anything. I just told him what a big fan yeah. I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, said, likewise, I don't, I don't want it to sound like I'm talking shit about him. I'm, I'm a huge oh, fan, but sometimes you would see some of his work. No, and I, was like, I feel what? the same way. I felt the same way when I saw what was it, Hawkman? Was that the Wednesday yeah, comic? Hawkman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like, uh, it, yeah, you're right. It was very, there was a lot of like 3D model tracing, and he was such a brilliant cartoonist. But I also I kind of guessed that he like if you read like you are here, which is one of my yeah. favorite comics of all time, that's yeah. pure Kyle Baker writing and drawing himself and DC didn't market it. Like he really got screwed on all of his little vertigo books. Yeah. they were cool and, and, and that's where his passion is. I don't think Kyle's a passionate superhero artist. So I think when he got that gig, he was like, this is a paycheck. So I'm just going to, mm -hmm. whatever helps me get to the end of this faster is going to help fund me doing my creator own stuff. And that's at the time when he was starting to self publish his own stuff and self fund his own animated project. So I yeah. think for him, it was just a job to get done and collect the money so he could do what he wanted to think, do. I also think that he gets bored. I think he likes to, you know, this is all us guessing, but I think he likes to experiment. And at the time, you know, I think Shiro was probably the only one using a lot of 3D modeling. Um, yeah. Was that sort of thing. And you know, it was interesting to see, and I don't think he's stuck with that style. I think it was just kind of a phase, like an experiment. Um, yeah, I'm going to share him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But, sure. Yeah, Dan, you had said uh, go, you were going to say something. No, there's nothing. It's always changed. It's like a. You know, a trash yeah, I know, I there's know. nothing happening. Up yeah, there. First of all, what's going on? What's going on with you today, Dan? You're, you're this isn't the normal Dan energy I'm used to. <laughs> so have you not had your coffee? Because he doesn't want no, to cancel here. this, this, this episode as well. Like the, the, the <laughs> <past ones. laughs> it's the only way 
he has to keep it so much together. <laughs> you're yeah. going to start seeing steam coming out of his ears. He's going to start bolts <laughs> popping off. Yeah, what was that last interview I, I did with you and Eric? And I'm, I'm just eating popcorn the entire time. Um, yeah, like that's the Dan that I was expecting today. Yeah. And with well, me I'm and Mateo, sure. I was like, I was like, I think this is going to be the most fun, useless interview ever because we're just going to be laughing the entire time and and making fun of each other. And this yeah. has become a very serious art. I, know, well, I think you don't know, Sean, is that he's been jerking off the whole episode. So, far, so it's been <laughs> right, here we go. Here minutes. we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. little yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Dan, what I wanted to ask you was, um, you had said like when you did slots, it was, that was a more natural cartoony style, but you feel like you've gotten more realism in your work now. Well, what, what why, well, what is that? You know, I think it's, I, don't, I haven't thought, thought about it because I'm always wanting to go back to a, a more cartoon style. I think sometimes the, the material well, kind of dictates dictates how to draw um, a certain thing. Like if, like if I had done Canary yeah. in the same style I, I drew slots, I don't think it, it, it would be as scary. Um, okay. And also I keep understanding and, and trying to learn more and more about um, drawing and, and I don't know. It's just, I keep, every time I start a new project, I, I go, I'm going to create a new style for this. Um, that's easier you know, to, to draw it so I can get more pages done, et cetera. And then every single time I land up putting more work into it, more detail. And I, I don't know why that is. I wish it wasn't the case. I look at someone like Darwin Cook, who, you know, probably did four to six pages a day when he had to. And, you know, he's, he's such a minimalist. But, mm -hmm. you know, and you look at that stuff, you go, what's the difference between, say, Bruce Tim and Darwin? And there's... Bruce Tim has a more universal, I think, appeal, you know, obviously by the massive success of Batman, the animated series and everything that guy touches, mm -hmm. you know, his comic book work to his animation. Then there's Darwin. And I think that there's, you know, it's not much different than Bruce Tim's work, but there's more of an adult vibe to it. So he's more able to what? adult, mature, like a mature feel to that. Yeah. And so, but yeah, um, yeah. He, so he can maintain this kind of grit in the war feel, um, but it's a very minimalist. I'm like that to me is the ultimate goal is to, you know, like, for instance, like looking at the, like, say, Dave Mazzucchelli, who's everyone's been picking up. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have that Batman year one um, that everyone that you see now, the artist edition. And you look at yeah, that. I don't have it either. At, you know, I, I, I got to get that no. thing. I, I want but, it. I want it. Yeah, I just don't have it. But, but for me, at... just side note, for me, what I do have is the Born Again artist oh, edition. I, I should get that. Which I prefer to the year one stuff. But if but you look ahead. at what he did after that, he went, he was doing stuff for like you know, rubber blankets. And it's like, right. like, is this the same? It is the same artist, but it's such a departure from that. Right. But I am sure if I studied that stuff a little bit more, I'd, I'd say, wow, this is this storytelling is even more direct. And I, I think ultimately that's the biggest thing in comics is not necessarily how well you draw. It's how well you can tell a story. And that means so many different things. That's the pacing, yep. how, what that emotionality that the reader is feeling while he's reading the work or she's reading the work. All those things are very, very important. And, and obviously it takes a great artist to be able to, to do that exceptionally well, but the finished product, like the, the, the veneer of it all is may not be as say hyper realistic as you know like a Norman Rockwell, and I don't think it's entirely necessary to to have that hyper realism to be a tremendous comic book artist. I mean, look at Mignola; it's a very simplified form of s storytelling. Um, if you're do you comparing think, it, do you think? Hmm? Oh, go ahead, finish what you're going to say. I, I mean, if you compare question. that to say whoever is drawing the Avengers currently, you know. Right, um, right. Who's who's every nut and bolt is drawn? All these, uh, you know. Right. Which is more enjoyable? Sometimes, you know, when when you're reading a comic book, in in the best cases, it takes you back to everything else in your world is erased, and and now you're just looking at this, and you're in this world, and that's it's a whole, it's a very magical experience. Is it magical, Dan? Yeah, just like my Dungeons and Dragons shirt. 
<laughs> yeah. the, we're here with the wizard Dan Pedersen yeah. today. I'll start looking uh, like no, Al gonna... Moore. I'll have the beard and the, <laughs> the hair. Wow, he's talk about an ego, man. Wow. He's a writer. Now he's Alan Moore. No, I'm Alan that. Moore. Yeah. Just magically. <laughs> Um, what I was going to, this is a conversation me and Jim kind of got into the other day. Uh, we were specifically talking about Mignola, but now that we're talking about Maza Kelly, it's kind of the same thing. I feel like they've reached such a peak level of craftsmanship that their art has become a language to tell oh, yeah. a story. Like when you're talking about like this, like the current Avengers artist who's drawing all this stuff. Do, do you feel like there's a separation between art and story um, when, like when you're drawing to that level of detail? Well, I think, I think it's easy to get caught up in the minutia of it. And um, probably Matteo can speak to this better than I can, but you know, I, ideally it's, when you're doing a page or a panel, you should go, where do you want this? Where do you want someone to look? And sometimes like Mobius did it well, like he would draw something very linear, the whole page would be linear. And then one spot on the, um, in the black and white part would have a little bit more black, like a, like maybe even a circle of black. That's, um, the line weight was, you know, three times as large as everything else. Your eye immediately goes to that. And he's in, in, you know, all three of us can, you know, think about that all the time. It's very hard to do all the time like that. So, yeah, yeah, especially when you're drawing everything very detailed, it's it's like when do you pull the camera back? So a lot of anchors have that problem where they'll put as much detail in the foreground, middle ground, and background, and it yeah. it tends to flatten everything out. You don't know where to look. Right. You don't know where to. Well, focus. especially yeah. with digital art now, where you can zoom like yeah. a, a thousand <laughs> oh, yeah. times more. And there's, yeah, the, some some people lose the idea of okay, here's the page because they're so inside that they lose track of. The whole, you know, the whole yeah. picture, basically. So, yeah, that's that's a risk, too. Mateo, but, what do you... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I wanted to add something. Uh, like, generally speaking, I would say that... Uh, it's, it's hard. It's it's technical for my English, so I'll, 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 I'll try to do my best. Well, don't, you, you got to go slow anyway, because it's going to take Dan a few minutes to just... Okay, yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So... As I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I, I I think that and that that this is the reason why uh, I I'm not worried about changing style from project to project. It's um, uh, and sometimes I, I I also change the way I tell a story depending on what the story is. I think that even even having a, a really detailed uh, uh, way of drawing uh, can work depending on a project. Like for example, if you have this, I don't know, a fantasy book mm -hmm. where most of the things, the the cool things are the details, the new sword, the fucking. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the armor that's made with the scale of the specific dragon and, and in general the public that's that's what they like to see spectacular things and stuff like that and a lot of details it makes sense it can even make sense to be really detailed and really focus on the stuff uh for example if they if i had to draw like a fantasy book where most of the things were uh, most of the important things of the story were, were mainly aesthetical. I will probably go way less black and a lot of fine line. And mm -hmm. I'll try to have fun working on all the details. You know, I'm thinking yeah. about sometimes about uh, Eric, especially the old days, Eric, when he used to, you know, create and add details to his illustrations yeah. with, oh, crazy. I don't know, Arrow Man, but you could see this weird thing coming out of the arm and the yeah. knuckles they had this detail and stuff like that it makes sense for that book for example so yeah you gotta cater uh, to for example it, yeah for example my book now what i'm doing is uh i i don't want it to be i mean i'm putting a lot of energies into drawing and drawing stuff correctly but uh, I'm trying to compensate that so that the art is not too distracting 
by having really grounded pages. So mm-hmm. you there's one splash page maybe at the end of the book, but it mostly the pages mm-hmm. are five, six, or seven panels. There's no no double spread pages. It's all really grounded and static, wow. so you can really stop and I don't know. It's you're not you're not taken in a in a in a in a speed race. Yeah, you have to take right. your time because everything the rhythm is also is always like them them yeah. them, and, and everything is is based on characters' rea- reaction, characters' interactions, and character gestures, the characters' faces. So, mm. th- th- this was just to give you an example of what I mean. Like yeah. it's. Everything can work depending on what 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 you want to do, and even a cartoony style could work in a horror book, for example. As yeah. long as you know and you have a vision, a specific vision of right, how right. this thing is gonna look like, and it's just just you. I'm the artist. They're just asking me to do this to follow the script, right. so I'm just gonna right. do it no matter what. Like I'll be drawing superheroes as much as you know, horror or fantasy the same way because I don't give a shit. I'm just right. doing an exhibition of my of my stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And as I was asking the question, I started thinking about um, like Brian Hitch on The Ultimates. Like that style needed to be what it was for that book. Or look at Jeff because, Darrow. Like at Jeff Darrow is all yeah. about detail. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's amazing. Like you can't stop looking at it. So I guess it really right. just depends on how uh, – you know, what type of thinker that artist is and how well they're composing um, what they're doing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, maybe I can find a happy marriage between between the two, and that's that's kind of what I struggle with. Also, if you're drawing very realistic, the moment you um, draw less realistic, it, it's blazingly apparent, and then it looks like you're phoning that panel in. And So you're setting – sometimes for um, me, I guess, I'm setting such a high bar – that um you know also you'll get more from an editor you get more art corrections too because the more realistic you are the more it it caters to you know realism the more cartoons you are you go oh well that's a style that's that's not off right right so that's a good point yeah that's a good point so we should talk about the first time mateo met dan because Mateo, we we were talking about oh, this before God. you got on camera. Yeah. Uh, Dan lied to you and a made liar. up a story, oh. and and Dan yeah. tried that to pass it first, off as that was the of first many. of many lies. <laughs> so what was the, what was the lie? What was the lie? Okay, he told so you? okay, now I I gotta go back in time and and go back to first of all two thousand and eight because Dan was the first artist that I've ever met in the states. Oh. Oh really? It was my first. Yeah, it was my first trip to San Diego, and uh, and you were. I remember I was with Aura Sham, who, who was the um, the writer on Hyperkinetic, my first book yeah. ever for Image, and then we decided to join you guys uh, at the drink and draw. And I remember a bunch of people were there, and 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 uh, and Howard was a good friend of yours, so he introduces. Uh, us and uh and and that's you were the first artist with it, that i actually got to talk yeah. with for a second and we're sitting to ne- uh, next to each other and he you know you invited me you were really nice they invited me to draw and uh we with you guys i remember eric larson was there there was you know oh, some wow. some really big yeah, names models. in there yeah, yeah. i remember and, i remember you uh, drew a conan you drew a, i still have it you do conan for me Oh really? Ah, uh, yeah. awesome. I I didn't remember that, but yeah. uh, but yeah. So, and I remember like for a good because I remember Helena, your wife, that angel. She's yes, aware woman. since she's not from the states originally. Like she knows she 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 saw that I had trouble understanding English, so yeah. she was really careful about speaking slower. And stuff like that, and, yeah. and 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 I remember instead for you, Dan, for the first, and I told you later, a few years oh. later, that for the first three or four years, 
I couldn't understand a single word you said. So I was just <laughs> limiting myself to laughing whenever you laugh and I'm trying to understand, okay, I think it just made a joke. So let's laugh. But for yeah. for a, a bunch of years, I couldn't understand it. And then yeah, when I started to understand- our, our conversations were, I remember that very distinctly because I remember there was something special about Mateo at, at that drink and draw. I just, he just, I loved his drawing and everything. We just, we got along, even though I knew at some point I go, neither of us understand each other. We're just having a good time drawing, <laughs> but you know, Mateo could barely speak English at that point. So now, oh, now yeah. he speaks almost great. zero. Yeah. Just funny in retrospect. And, and, and so, yeah, after a few years I started, and that wasn't, wasn't just you, just to be clear, like 90% yeah. of the people I met, in the states, I couldn't understand them. the The few I I could understand were the ones that spent time and tried to talk slower to me, which were Eric, I remember Elena, and a few other people. But you know, there's a lot of friends that I have now in the states that for the first three or four years of their relationship, I couldn't understand <laughs> anything. I would just nod and laugh when they laugh and be sad when they were at the sad face. Yeah. Uh, that's all I. That's all I got that then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then all of a sudden I was able to have a, you know, a, 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 some kind of conversation. I remember you and I, and I think Dave Johnson and somebody else who entered a pub and there was some UFC or some MMA on the yeah. screens. And you told me, well, I, I did MMA for a while. I was, uh, I was actually like fighting in bars and stuff. See, that's what cage. I'm talking about, Sean. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what I, never, <laughs> no, I never did MMA. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> I wish I did. So, if, so I did, if, so I, Dan, honestly, Dan, if I could do MMA, I would not be doing comics. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, I'm too old now, anyhow. But, um, but what but no, Dan I mean, I did do. do. See, um, Maybe, yeah. maybe maybe Dan didn't lie. Maybe you're right, Dan. Maybe it was lost yeah. in translation. Because so what, what Dan what, did do was these things called tough man fights. Yeah. They're just idiots in bar. Like, this is pre-MMA, pre-UFC. Um, and it was just dumbbells. And, like, I, I, grew, I grew up in Florida. And there'd be a big it's bar. Say no more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there'd be a, there'd be <laughs> That's what you need to say. <laughs> yeah, there's... <laughs> There'd be a big like uh, boxing ring in a bit, it's, you know, a, a bar the size of a grocery store out here, and <laughs> and you'd be drunk, and you'd go, oh, let's get in there and fight. And what you wouldn't realize is you're a drunk guy fighting. Like there's a boxing school nearby, and they're like, here, let's just <laughs> let's just beat up and it's great sparring practice for these guys who are actual boxers to work on some <laughs> you know dumbbell like me, and um, you know. If there's a reason I'm a comic book artist and not a fighter. I would, you know, I'd get my head bashed in. It was, it was not like I'm. I'd walk. It's like a Rocky movie. I'd walk in and beat everybody up, and you know, ch you know, trophy. It was just, it was a disaster. So, <laughs> okay, so okay, now, now we're we're getting at the real point. So probably what happened was this. So yeah. you told me this, but mm. since we and and back then my English, I. I I would start to understand people, but my English, my understanding was not 100%. So probably you told me this, but my translation, my ad, I just got the main words and yeah. they put up, you know, put together oh. this thing. We were watching the fights. So Dan fought some MMA fights in a cage. Oh God. And then oh. a few days later, I was talking to somebody else. I was like, oh, by the way, I didn't know that Dan was an MMA fighter. They're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, he told me. Well, that's okay. We're gonna tell you a couple of things about Dan that you might not know, <laughs> and then they explain. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have done some like sparring here and there. Like, I have a friend who's uh, a big MMA guy, and even if oh, he's the war just master. Like, the war master, even if he was just playing with me, like like a like a child, like a a grown up would play with a child. That's in it's just so humiliating and you see oh, yeah. you know it's, it's the difference is it is unbelievable like you walk away and just go wow his his playful jab is harder than i've ever been yeah. punched um in, in real life it's crazy the difference it's well, yeah not only that we're, we're not talking about an, an 
an MMA fighter. We're talking about oh, a yeah, former world, world champion, champion in yeah. MMA. So Josh Burnett, and it's especially in wrestling and grappling. Like I don't know if you ever grappled with him as no. well, or oh, you, no. you're just oh, okay, you're just striking, <laughs> because that no. would would have been even a, a worse humiliation. And when it, when he, his girlfriend, yeah. we were at tap out um, training, and his girlfriend double legged me, and I went across the room. Like his girlfriend could beat me up. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I'd hate to see what he would do. You know, I'd be through. I'd be, it'd oh be like god. a Looney Tunes thing where I'd go through the brick wall. You know? Oh my god! I, I remember the first times I started training jujitsu. The like the 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 sadness inside my spirit. I couldn't even describe where it was. The sadness. It was so deep in me. What, what belt are you when, now? When I went back home. Oh no no no! I stopped like uh, with COVID. Then oh. I had a kid, and I, I had to stop. I just go to the gym. I just lift weights. Uh-huh. And, uh, Mateo, will you ever I, get back I, to I it? I was almost almost blue belt. Like wow, I, I was a uh, uh, f- what's the four stripes, and then you go to the up to the next belt. So it was mm-hmm. probably four stripes. Your blue belt or three stripes. Blue my belt. son is really doing close it now. to getting the blue belt. Yeah. Was that my son, my son? Loves it. He's doing it now, and um. I, I, I go and like, because I watch the UFC is, you know, MMA is the only sport I actually watch. I don't watch ba- basketball, mm-hmm. baseball or anything, but I actually know that sport. I know all the stats. I know all these, you know, I know all the moves. The yeah. coach, uh, the professor had me get into um, open mat one day. And that mm-hmm. was just like, just such a the conceptually, like you're worrying, you're not just worrying about where his hands are. You're worrying where the feet are. You're worrying where body position, oh, yeah, man. weight displacement. It's, it's so mentally challenging and physically yeah. exhausting. I have like, I have a yeah. new respect for watching my son and, you know, I'm telling him, put this move on him. And it's like, yeah, it's not, it's easy to say that it's not very different to do it. You know? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah. Especially at the, uh, the beginning, you waste so much. You realize you waste so much energy because you're using all the strength. Yeah. You're so tight, once. you know? Yeah. You're super tight. So when yeah. it's time to actually go, your your muscle have already worth too much. So yeah. you you have to learn how to pace yourself and in that in that world. But uh, but uh, so, it, it gets so, easier after a while. That's why I'm gonna stick to so, drawing. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dan, yeah, Dan is Colt is Colt gonna grow up to have nightmares of arguing with you about you on on the sidelines <laughs> yelling at him what to put in? <laughs> Probably. Are you I'm keeping Are you keeping the cycle going? <laughs> I had a good conversation with him. We went to we went to a competition. And maybe this could be translatable for for drawing or other things in life. And he's a young kid. He's he's ten years old, and we're on our way to a a very big jujitsu tournament. I think it was only his second one. It was just he and I. And he goes he goes, Dad. And he's, he goes, I, 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 something wrong with my stomach. He goes, I, I, I feel, I, I feel very nervous. You know, he didn't know how to articulate the yeah. fear he was feeling, you know, in anticipation. And then I explained to him, you know, I, my, my dad was a different animal. He grew up in a different time. Like he'd never take the time to ex- explain what was actually happening to me. And I said, well, Christaki, I go, you're excited. I go, and our bodies have hormones in them. And like, if you're, scared or excited the same hormone gets released it, the adrenaline mm. i go it goes through your body and it's a different sensation a different feeling and it gives you both energy and it, get, and it makes it maybe a little bit nervous i go but you're not nervous i go you're you're just more alert right now because all your senses are amplified because of this adrenaline and it's processing through his mind he goes oh you're right and he sort of fe- he started to feel better but it is true like that scared oh, feeling yeah. we feel is no different than ex- excitement that you might feel anticipating, like if you're a little kid, a birthday or, or something, there's the same sort of thing. It's just how you manage th- those feelings. And um, he went into it. And um, remember, he, I wanted to see if he wanted to warm up before his match with the other kids. He, and he looked at everybody, surveyed the thing, goes, I think I got this, Dad. And he went in and he, he won. I think he won second place. So he did great. Nice. It's awesome. Um, nice. Yeah, That's but I, I attribute the win to it was two competitors, my, to be honest. My but, advice, yeah. my Still. advice is what helped him. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. No, he'll be able to beat me up very soon. Yeah, that's going to be very another. Just How another, old is he now? 
What? How old is he now? He's 10. He's 10 uh, years old. So gotcha. by the time he's about 14, he'll be like putting me in headlocks, choking me out. I'll be tapping all the time. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As you're working, like you're working, and then all of a sudden you pass out. And then yeah. you wake up like 30 <laughs> yeah. minutes later because he choked you out without telling you. I wish he choked me out. Finish the page and then I wake up. That'd be great. <laughs> then you wake up and the, the page is done. Yeah. Mateo, how, 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 many, how many pages do you like? Can you do you start and finish a page a day? Because I noticed at the conventions when we're doing, um, you know, you, you might do three commissions a day and they all look like they could really be covers. I mean, they're all that detailed and well thought out and composed. So do you do a page a day? Yeah, right now I'm doing a page a day. Uh, sometimes I can do a page or maybe a pencil a day. So one page and a half a day, depending on the complexity of the page. But yeah, right now, since, you know, now with the kid and everything, I can work, I can manage to work like seven, eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a page. A page will take me in between five or and seven, seven hours. That's the I same with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing the and now I'm doing the commissions. Uh, I I spend more time on those now, and I can do two a day. Two. How many do you do, Sean? Yep. How many you commissions? Because you're painting more. Because I'm what? Part, aren't you doing more painting than like your commissions are generally paintings at this point? Uh, yeah, most most of the commissions I've been getting over the past few years were painted ones, so uh, those take a while. I, I start those at home. I don't oh. start a painting at a convention very often. I'll, I'll usually line them up and get them to a, a point so that, because when I'm at the con, I don't just want to have my head down and be working the whole time. I want to have time to talk to people and, and do all that. So I, I try to get my paintings to a point where I can work on them casually and still ha be able to do that. Having interactions. Yeah. yeah our inter Sean yeah, and that's... I love to sit next to each other and, inspire each other i think is what we do right sean no dan you stop sitting with us dan don't don't no. don't yeah. don't don't try to hey, you I'm sitting. you traitor I, I, <laughs> no i still yeah. jason's still my art manager i did a show with him yeah, but... a while ago i did him the last show i did was with jason and i'm doing the show with him on um the uh orlando show the art show yeah dan's doing yeah, OAX. OAX. Yeah. awesome so you, yeah. are you gonna be in uh new york by any chance? No, not this time. I'm going to be in New York. There's a, a Midtown signing. I did these three covers that connect for uh, the Absolute line, for DC's Absolute mm -hmm. line. I'm doing a signing in Midtown. Yeah, this is something I can actually talk about, if, depending on when this goes on the air. But when, when is the signing? I think it's November 6th. It's the first Wednesday of November. Oh. And it's at Midtown okay. Comics in New York City. And I'll be there at 5 o'clock, I think, I believe. In the morning. Right. In the I'll make sure to release this. I'll make sure to release this episode after that. Of course, yeah, that's what yeah. we did last time. <laughs> so that people just so that people can know what they missed. Yeah, let's right. See. It's yeah, just November to get, get get you back a little bit for all the pulled episodes. I, yeah. I will do it on November seventh, Sean. Just 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 Perfect. a spite. I'll I'll yeah. do it November sixth, like the minute the signing ends. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So and, oh, it's funny, uh, we're talking about the jujitsu and, uh, and you reminded me of something because you, you, you were trying to think in parallel between the art stuff that can be translated into art from jujitsu as well. Uh, it, it's funny because like basically most of my teammates, probably all of them, the stuff that they liked the most was just sparring at the end of the, of the uh, training. So we had like normally you do the last thirty minutes of sp sparring. So you you have yeah. five minutes round and you you switch partners. Instead, my favorite part was uh, just drilling. So basically, there's a new technique and you keep repeating it. You know, you start slow and then mm -hmm. you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And sometimes I had lessons like the morning, uh, early in the morning. It was just me sometimes and and the coach. And um, and I would ask him, okay, so the technique that we did yesterday, can we do it for like an hour and a half, the same technique? Wow. He was like, what? 
Yeah, because <laughs> I'm obsessive like that. Like I, I, I try to bring like the same method that I had while I was learning how to draw into jujitsu. So I'm fascinated by the process. I, I don't care because I'm not planning on, you know, doing jujitsu matches or stuff. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. I just want to learn a new thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I was really fascinated by that, that thing. But even, even the coach was like, what, what are you sure? Like, are you, is this what you like to do? I thought we'd just yeah. do some techniques and then we'll spar for an hour. I was like, no, no, I guess no, it's no, no, repetition, that hour. repetition gets, it, it improves everything. It's just, that's yeah. how it works. I was, I was thinking about this more and more lately because, um, about art and you see a lot of people, they'll get into the business and their art styles won't change for mm. 20, 30 years. They, they've, draw exactly, you know, we were talking about Mazza Kelly and Kyle Baker, all these guys who are trying, you, for instance, Sean, yeah. whose art keeps going in different directions. And, but there's so many artists that, um, find themselves in a position where they're like, Oh my God, you know, I, I used to be getting a, a more work and, you know, um, maybe the styles changed, but they haven't changed. And I started thinking about that. I'm like, there was a point in time for every artist where they showed their portfolio to an editor or a publisher. And they weren't good enough. They, they couldn't get hired. And so they went back and they worked on their craft and they improved and they said, okay, I need to work on this. I need to work on that. And they keep getting better and then they get hired. And then I think what happens for a, a lot of artists is they stop going back to the well. They stop going, I can improve. They, they go, well, I, I've reached the right, point where my work right. is professional and now everything's fine and you don't have to continue. And I, I think the, tr I think the trick is, is there's always stuff to learn. There's always stuff to improve and compound and you, you can never be complacent. You can never say, okay, now I can breathe. You can never breathe in comics. Yeah. You can never breathe as yeah. an artist. You should always be swimming hard, you know, going forward and going, yeah. Oh, you know what? This one artist draws birds so, so well, and I can't draw birds. You can draw birds. You just, you haven't pushed yourself the way you pushed yourself initially in your career to, to maybe draw birds or like horses are hard to draw. Like, and you, you, Cats. you try to turn oh, that God. into something where like, Oh, you know, I'm going to keep practicing the way I learned how to, I could, I couldn't always draw a head. Well, you know, maybe now that artist can draw a face well, or they have some kind of signature Still, thing they do the, well. These days, you can't really draw yeah. as well. But, yeah. That's for another episode. Yeah, well, Next episode, we'll well. criticize all your art. We have all your books. And we'll we'll have a critique of Dan. <laughs> and uh, so, but, uh, but and, and another thing that I want to add to that, like some people, they, they're not used to put themselves and their taste for art in front of everything. So they spend their life trying to find the to to be the thing that other people like. Yeah, I did that. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were describing that when you were yeah. younger, but it, which is it can happen when you're young mm -hmm. because yeah. you want to enter an industry, so you follow the main example. So back then, as you said, it was yeah, Jim, Jim Lee, Lee Liefeld. So it was normal. A lot of artists did that, I imagine. Uh, but. Uh, oh. But but then you stop doing that and you became your own thing, you know, and 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 I and I have the feeling maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but you're one of those artists that gets this kind of things. Like I think you like what you do. Then you you can be you know you can be critic of your own stuff, of course. And you're you have not, to be hypercritical, uh, telling yourself yeah. that you're the best. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you do the stuff that you like doing. I mean, I, the feeling that I, I have is that, that that's the, 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 the goal for you. I try to draw stuff that I'd like to see as a fan. And, and another thing that's yeah. like kind of clicked for me was I was drawing covers and I was drawing what I thought was expected of me. And then I started thinking like, well, what if your favorite artist drew this same cover? How would they approach it? And I'd go, oh, it, 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 in my mind, I would see the cover. And I'd go, oh, yeah. they do it like that. And then I'd, I, I finally started saying to myself, well, why – can't you do it like that? Like what's stopping yeah. you from drawing the way you want to draw or the, or drawing in a style that is appealing to you? You know, like, like right. both of us, all, all three of us love 
Sergio Topi, but you don't want to look, yeah. you don't want to be Sergio Topi, but there's aspects of what that man does artistically that you're like, I'd like to incorporate more of that in my work. And there's, you know, right. it, but then there's a part of you, some artists, they'll say, oh, but I can't because I draw this way. But yeah. then you're limiting yourself. So I started thinking about like, well, God, how would my favorite, like, uh, you know, how would Greg Tuccini approach this? I'm like, oh my God, it would look amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, try to do that. Try, at least try. Yeah. It might, right, it, it, right. You might fall short of it. You know, it might be 20% of what how you saw it in your mind, but it's certainly going to be better right. than phoning it in. And not, it's not even phoning it in. Sometimes you're just doing what you hope the editor will like. Or yeah. the fans. Or the like. editor or, or the audience or whoever. Yeah. Right. But they, mm -hmm. they project into exterior people what they should be doing right. which is you know learn what you like and and try to be try to think as you said as a as a as a, a reader try to be your own reader yeah. and see what and think what i would what would i love to see on this cover for example or on this book right. how would i love this book to look Yeah, if yeah. I was a, a reader, you know, and there's yeah, a lot of people that I don't think are able to do that. And it's a, it's a really important, you know, uh, well, because it, really otherwise cool. you, you'll spend an entire career just trying to be somebody and you don't even know if you are that person. So you right. spend yeah. an enormous amount of hours trying to be somebody that you don't even know, you know, instead yeah. of being yourself. Yeah, it's very hard to take a chance on yourself. But then, you you know, with the advent of all this, all these um, Instagram stories that you read when everyone's telling you, here's how to be a success. Here's how I was. I mean, you're in, you're inundated right. with that. If that's your algorithm of like success, whether it's uh, financially or success yeah, as an yeah, artist or a yeah. creator, an individual. They, and what's repeated in those things all the time is, you know, do what makes you happy and what makes us happy as artists, you know, sometimes we don't give ourselves the permission to do that. And that's a real shame. And I think that's the case for every career, every, um, everything we're into friendships, relationships. Like I wish yeah. I was more, By the way, we're talking about Eric. We should say it at, yeah. at this point, <laughs> all this old, this whole thing. We're just talking about Eric. Yeah. Poor Eric. <laughs> Eric, man, that's another person I don't like sitting next to at a show and just watching that guy just zip out these amazing, uh, drawings. And like you said, I, as soon as you mentioned the Iron Man stuff, I'm like, it, yeah. he, he can draw an Iron Man that looks like that's actually functional. Like you believe an Iron yeah, Man right. suit could be made when you look at an Eric and right. drawing. It's crazy. One of the first few people that loves drawing Iron Man. Like oh, I, yeah, I, I, I right. myself, I <laughs> hate it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like, I like drawing crime books or fantasy books. I, I'm not, a, I'm not keen on, technical costumes or you know, oh like, my uh, god me neither man yeah, also he's yeah. got no facial expression the right, worst right. man yeah. yeah but yeah yeah all right well let's uh let's end it on that note here we've done our so hour. much more to give sean uh, i have so much more to Dan, say you'll have to come back you'll have to come back no. but first let's see if you allow this one to be released then yeah, we'll sure. have you back uh -huh. right. of course yeah, on sleep November, on it November think about 9th. it and then you'll tell us Yeah. Yeah, yeah, November. Yeah, November 9th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you let us know. <laughs> Actually, let us release it and then the next day tell us we got to pull, we'll pull it off. It. That'll be yeah. better. Yeah, exactly. just pull it. Thanks right, a lot, Dan. Thank you, thanks yeah, for thanks joining us. Thank you, man. Dan. It was a pleasure. Miss you. It. Miss you, brother. All right. So well, I, I have a little bit of a cold. So this bye bye just, will be okay. shorter That's than fine. usual. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Right.
Sean, according to my analytics, your thumbnails are one of the highest in demand items on the internet. What have you got to say about that? Jim, funny you should say that. I have a gift for everyone in the Ink Pulp community. A free PDF of some of my thumbnails, as Jim said, which are in high demand. Also, I'm giving you a new home, the home of craft, the official home of the Ink Pulp community, inkpulp.tv. A place where you can learn about the craft of comics, engage with the community, receive special offers, and so much more. In order to get your free PDF, head to Ink Pulp TV, sign up for the newsletter. This is just the beginning of so many wonderful things to come. Thank you. Keep craft alive.